Welcome again everybody to this, our fifth lesson of the complete Flutter course right here on YouTube. In this lesson we're going to go over the solution for the exercise I gave you in the uh, last video. I hope that you guys have all taken the time to actually try it. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult because after all it was very similar to the previous one. So I hope it was a great opportunity to get some experience, get some practice, but also not have to try too hard. So, you guys will remember what we had to do was make a simple function which takes hours, minutes and seconds, or none of those, and returns the total number of seconds. Now the very first thing about this a function is that I don't need a void main. There is no, we're not actually doing anything inside the main program, we don't need to print anything. So we can just leave that out. And by leaving that out, what it lets us do is import that file like I did in the previous video. And for Dart to export or import something, we don't need any keyword to export. In something like JavaScript, you'd actually have to write out export and then the function. In Java, you'd have to write public and then the function name, but we don't need to do anything like that. Everything is exported by default. So we can just start with the name, which we'll call get total seconds open and close our brackets that means that it's a function and then open and close curly braces this allows us to write the function body now of course we don't have our return type yet so this will return well if it's if it's total seconds that must be an int and notice it has the blue squiggly line because we're not returning anything it has a return type of int but currently there is no return statement. And then we're going to have to take in an int hours, int minutes, and int seconds. But I did mention that we can pass in none of them. And as soon as you have this kind of choice where we can pass in all the arguments or we can pass in none of the arguments, they must be named parameters. And we'll do that by putting the curly brackets around it. If we don't do that and we try to use get total seconds, and for example, I want to pass in seconds 20, well, my program's going to see this and say, hey, this 20, first of all, must be hours because it's the first parameter. And second of all, where's your minutes? Where's your seconds? This isn't going to work. No, no, it's not going to like this at all. That's why instead we're going to use the curly brackets to make this named parameters. So the first thing we're going, to, we're going to need to do is to create our total seconds, our returned value. So we can say int total seconds, and we'll need to give it the starting value, which in this case will be zero. And then we can say if hours, so that's our first variable. And in fact, we should say if hours not equal to null, then we can say total seconds plus equals, and then say hours times 60 times 60. Of course, 60 seconds in a minute, 60, 60 minutes in an hour. We don't need an else statement. We could include one, but it's not necessary. We could say if minutes not equal to null, total seconds plus equals, and no, that's actually correct, that's why I made a mistake. Uh, minutes times 60. So by using this plus equals, it's going to take this value 0 plus whatever value is here, plus this one, minutes times 60. And finally, if seconds not equal to null, total seconds plus equals seconds semicolon at the end and finally return total seconds so there we go that is actually this complete function and it's going to work perfectly fine i did mention i don't need a void main in this file but to demonstrate this function i will need to include one so void main and i'm just going to copy the function name to use it, we're just going to put like this, the name of the function, open and close parentheses, 
and the semicolon at the end. So this, the way I have it written right here, is going to give us zero as a return because there's no seconds, no minutes, no hours. But I can also say hours or minutes. And I'm just showing you with one first so you can see it works correctly. And finally, I'm going to include, let's say, two of each. So you can see the math is done correctly. And this is in a folder called v4 and it's called exercise2.dart. So to run this, I can say in my terminal, if you're already in the correct folder, dart v4 slash exercise two dot dot and I haven't printed anything else which is why I didn't get any outputs but all of these did run so what I'm gonna do is have one two three four five print statements and just cut all of these out See, I did briefly mention in the last video that normally when we code stuff, we don't have these print statements everywhere. Uh, normally, if I run some kind of function, I want to get its value, but I probably, you, you know, if I use Flutter, I'm going to display it in my Flutter code. I'm not just going to print it out to the, to the console. So you're probably going to have the same kind of habit that I have where you don't print anything else. Uh, eventually you'll develop that habit. But okay, do it again. We can see the first one prints zero, second prints 3,600, 60 seconds in one minute, one second in one second, and this value for two hours, two minutes and two seconds. And of course this will work with any number you put in. So there's that. It's the next day. I was just editing the video which I recorded yesterday, ready to upload it. But honestly, I was feeling a little bit lazy. And when I was looking at this function body, this beautiful function body I wrote, I just thought to myself, who has time to read all this code by me? Uh, not me, that's for sure. Uh, the way I taught you guys to do it this way, it's probably the best way to do it. It's very, very clear. Uh, you can definitely see what's going on. We're being very safe, but you know, functions, you can always do things faster. There's always a better way of doing it. Um, you have all kinds of different options. So I want to show you guys a different way of doing it. Uh, it's not the best way because it's, it's too concise. It's too, um, too sudden. Uh, it's not as clear with what we're doing, uh, but it's a single line. <laughs> so that's a good thing. So we can just say int uh, get total seconds and I'll call it compact. What we're going to do here is we'll set default values for all of our variables as zero. Int hours equals zero minutes, seconds. And by doing this, since we already have a default value, it cannot be null because if we don't put in a value, it's just going to take zero instead. And then we can just say return straight away and then open and close our brackets and say hours times 60 times 60 plus minutes times 60 plus seconds. And then remember to put our semicolon at the end, save this. And to show that it does work the same way, I already have the print statements from last time, get total seconds. That was the original function. And I'm just going to say dot, uh, I'm in a folder called v5, v5 called exercise two dot dot. And you can see the results uh, are over here. And the reason the final one is showing twice is because I think I forgot to mention it in the previous video, but I did write it. Uh, Although we can just print out the results straight away, we don't normally do something like this, especially working with Flutter, we don't really use the command line much and print will print to the command line. So what you'll often see instead is we'll say int, uh, you know, we'll, we'll create some kind of variable in which we store the results and then we do something with that variable. Uh, for example, we could 
or we could show it in a button text or show it somewhere on the screen. But since I don't have a um, you know, flutter screen ready, instead I'm just gonna print it out. But I am just showing how you would do this more often than doing this. No way. But we can see those values there. And if I just copy this function name and change all of these here, save my, um, save my file and run the same thing, you can see we get exactly the same numbers. So I could do it in a single line of code or three if you count you know, the prototype and the closing curly brace, or I could do it in a much more verbose way. Uh, both of them are correct. You should probably try to write somewhere halfway in between these two. Uh, if I wrote like this all the time, my employer would get mad at me because they'd say, hey, Avidius, what are you doing? Nobody can understand your code. It, it, it might be buggy, you need to be more clear. So yeah, that's fair. But if I wrote this, honestly, who, who has the time? <laughs> not I, not I, I'll tell you that much. And one more thing, guys. At the end of the video, I always upload all of my code to GitHub. So if you guys want to copy it from there, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you'll get the link in the video description. So if you do want to do that, be sure to check it out. Okay, guys. So I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. Be sure to stick around for the next one where we will continue learning about Dart and eventually we'll get to Flutter and learn all these amazing things. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are as well. In the meantime, myself, Avidius, 